Today, we are going to put bees in an old aquarium of 70 liters. With this aquarium, we already went to a glass workshop and they drilled a hole in the bottom. We put a pipe into it and caulked the joint. Now, I will tell you in detail what else we did so that the bees could live in a transparent old aquarium. Transparent Aquarium. As you know, bees live on frames like this. Of course, we can't just put them in an aquarium. So we had to do some things, namely assemble these things. Our modifications become tight in the aquarium. And now the frame is very easy to place inside, just like a normal beehive. But that's not all. We also have a lid like this, which is covered from the top very tightly. There are holes in the lid for ventilation and for feeding. When these two holes have a net, the bees can't get out. Next to it, there is a device that allows you to put your hand inside the hive. In addition, our hive is equipped with a thermometer. And the most important thing is that the bees in the transparent hive will live in our hangar. We have already prepared a place near the window and are moving the aquarium there. It's dark outside, it's time to move. The bees have moved from the apiary to their new home. We've been incredibly lucky. The aquarium is old, but it's like it was designed for seven frames. We put a lid on it and move the hive to its new location. Now this is the pipe that has to go outside. The bees will enter the hive through this pipe. Now what are we going to pull in? <laughs> Guys, who wants to pull in? A bee is outside the hive, has flown to the hive and is begging to come in. It's good to have a window like that. Go home! When we transplanted the bees, it was 11 degrees Celsius outside. Now it's over 18 degrees Celsius. In just a few minutes, the bees have raised the temperature by 7 degrees. When we moved the aquarium, the fixture that holds the frames shifted, and now the frames are held in place by the last few inches. Now the bees have to seal all those places with propolis. It's a super strong bee glue, and we'll see how they do after a while. The bees are moved in the evening. By the time we get to the apiary, by the time we move them, it's already night outside. Now we cover the bees and tomorrow we come back and see how they survived the first night. So, first fun observation. We have three windows in our hangar. We put a hive near the middle window. The bees fly out to look for nectar and when they come back, they can't even figure out which window to go to. Of course, the bees near the middle window are the most numerous, but there are also a lot of bees near the outer windows. I will have to paint the entrance near the hive to make it easier for the bees to orient themselves when they return to their home. Now, hopefully, it will be difficult for the bees to confuse where to fly. Let's remove the cover from the hive's aquarium and see how the bees survive the first night. 
By the way, the box is not simple, it is made entirely of foam. This is done for insulation, so it was easier for the bees to maintain the necessary temperature inside. By the way, the temperature inside is already close to 28 degrees Celsius. Now I'm bringing the microphone closer, listening to the humming inside the hive. They're working. We did something wrong last night. We put wax on the edge and wanted to see how the bees would build the honeycomb. Actually, you put the honeycomb in the middle of the hive. The bees don't even notice the frame. They start building the honeycomb on the back of the glass. Boy, get out of here. They've built honeycombs in several places. One, two, three, and here's the biggest one. And that's just in one night. At the end of the aquarium, by the way, beehive, aquarium. A cemetery has formed, just as in ancient Sparta, where weak boys were thrown over the cliff, the bees take their sisters to the end of the hive, or they move there themselves to retire. Most bees are constantly at work. They perform many different functions to keep the bee family alive. There's a clear hierarchy. All the work is distributed, although from the outside, it looks like some bees are doing nothing. Some are standing still, some are walking around aimlessly. The bees are actually producing wax to build their honeycomb. They mix nectar from the fields with saliva to make honey, or they make a mixture of honey and perga to feed the larvae laid by the queen. Young bees, not yet flying for nectar, do hive work. They clean the honeycomb, sealing gaps in the hive, keeping the temperature constant. And when the bee becomes an adult, it will replace the old ones and take flight, become a nectar collector. Hype the raccoon is incredibly curious and climbed out to see the hive from above, but I don't think he ever realized it was the same honey factory. The raccoon shook the hive so much that if the bees hadn't applied propolis to the places we talked about earlier, everything inside would have fallen apart. Previously, in the video Enemies of Bees, we showed the wax moth. More specifically, the enemy of bees is not the moth itself, but its larva. This little white worm is the only creature in the world that feeds on wax. And when the bees find the worm, they'll throw it out of the hive. Now I'm going to show you what happens when beekeepers leave frames of wax unattended. There are six frames in that box, six frames that can be thrown away. It's all covered in cobwebs. This is now the home of a gray moth, not bees. Let's take the frame out and have a closer look. The frame is completely covered in cobwebs, woven by moth larvae. Where there were honeycombs, there are now cocoons. And the following frames, professional beekeepers should not look at at all, lest they get a heart attack. Where there was empty honeycomb, the moth larvae ate it all up. And there's a hole here. The larva has eaten all the wax. The only thing holding the honey together is that it's once sugared. This is the cocoon of the larva itself. And this is another frame from the same drawer. You could say it's a transparent frame. We separated all the damaged frames. We collected the wax separately and got such a huge pile. And the rest of the honey was melted into syrup. And now we pour the sweet nectar into a bag and put it on one of the holes to feed the bees. And on the other hole, we put a mixture of honey, milk powder, and soy powder. After a while, we will see which food the bees choose. Three days have passed, let's see what the bees have chosen, syrup or candy. If you look from below, you can see some bees sitting on the syrup and taking the syrup out of the bag. There is even some kind of fight going on over the sweet nectar. But it looks like the bees are not interested in the candy at all. Now look from above. The bag has been almost empty for three days and it looks like the bees need to add more syrup. The bees are not interested in the candy at all, not even a piece of it. If you want to see more bee videos, 